Hello, this is Craig, and I'd like to talk a little bit about Occupy Wall Street, because I've been getting some uh, misunderstandings about my views on the matter and why I hold them. The big thing about Occupy Wall Street is that I believe that having no demands is good. I believe that uh, this is actually a major strength of the movement, and I'd like to tell you why. The reason why, the idealistic reason why, is that this is a social movement. It's not an attempt to bargain for more. It's not a, uh, uh, it's not a union discussion. It's not a strike. It's a movement. And as such, it has more in common with previous social movements. Uh, for example, the old uh, free love movements or grunge rock and roll movement. And I don't mean that dismissively. Um, the term free love movement has, has come to mean uh, something rather dismissive, but at the time I assure you it was significantly more serious than we might think of it today. And this is much the same, uh, whether or not history will marginalize or uh, idolize this particular movement, I can't say. But I like this movement, and I like everything it stands for, and it does not need any demands because it is not attempting to bargain. It is attempting to change the world, or change parts of the world. Um, the people involved are just people, and they are there with other people. It is not a matter of... These are not people who are, are united by common opinions on how the world should work. These are people who are united by a common context and morality. Um, it is not that they are all going to sit down and say, this is how things should work. It is that they are all willing to sit down and say, things work extremely poorly right now. And this is a strength. If we had demands coming out of this, then what would happen is you'd have to, you'd have to bring your opinions in and you'd have to say, well, things would improve if certain categories of people gave up certain amounts of money or, or if certain taxes were levied. And that starts to split up the people into smaller groups and they don't uh, they don't get along anymore. By leaving things as a reaction to a context, a moral reaction to a context, by leaving things as a social movement, we don't have to worry about whether or not person A is a uh, Greenpeace nut and person B is a uh, is a communist of the of the uh, highest order and person C is actually a Republican. None of that stuff matters because what matters is they are all in the same context with the same basic moral response to that context, uh, which can be summarized as this sucks. Um, it sounds like I'm marginalizing it already, but I'm not. Uh, this is a fine this is a fine reason to get together to change things. Uh, similarly, trying to put words, put pretty words on top of this um, starts to diminish the fact that these are people, and all you really should need are people. Uh, people should be, and I consider them to be, the most important thing. Uh, words, uh, specific demands, they're not as important. And they're also a bad idea, tactically speaking, and I will go ahead and show you why. If you do not know the game of Go, I will teach it to you right now. Um, bear with me for just a moment as I teach you the basic rules. Unlike chess, Go is about surrounding territory rather than killing pieces. So, if, uh, if the white pieces surround more territory than the black pieces, the white pieces win. The white player wins. Um, it's, it's, been, it's considered a much more interesting game that has a lot more bearing on things like business, uh, and, and many books have been published about how actually playing Go and learning Go teaches you about all sorts of other things. But I'm going to use it to make a simpler point. When you play Go, you place the stones. And every time you place a stone, your enemy places a stone. So if you place a stone here, 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 and here, you've surrounded two pieces. But in the meantime, your enemy has gone ahead and placed a stone here, 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 and here, and he's got this whole part of the board. He's got influence all over that part of the board. So when you actually play this game, you'll normally play, uh, say, a move here, and then you'll go off and you'll do other things. And uh, when it comes right back around to this, you might have an enemy that plays, uh, they might play here, and you might think, oh no, 
they're playing there, and uh, and I've played too slowly. But in fact, now that they've played, you can respond, and you can start to capture territory, and you can wait until your enemy moves before you outline the specific boundaries of the territories you're trying to capture. If you try and outline too firmly, too quickly, your enemy will have the advantage because they will be able to move more lightly across more territory. In this case, putting out a specific demand is like putting down a stone. If I play here, and then the enemy plays over here somewhere, and then I play here, this move is like saying, oh, we want to raise taxes on the rich by 5% or whatever. It may be a solid move. It may surround more territory. Um, but when you come right down to it, it's not going to slow the enemy down. It's going to it's going to let them gather as much territory as want as they want with light stable moves while we're busy backing ourselves into this corner. Um, and that is the tactical reason why I think that issuing demands is wrong. The idea here is that you should be putting as much pressure as possible on the side of things that you are trying to pressure rather than trying specifically to get some minor uh, inconveniences dealt with or uh, change things in some small way because if you do that they'll go ahead and change things in some big way that you don't like while you're not looking while you're focused on whatever you're doing like a magician when you focus on the right hand they'll go ahead and pull a card out with their left and steal your watch there's also one more reason why it's important that we start thinking about this uh, not as a uh, not as something where we issue demands but as something where we try to change things and that is as I said before this is a movement about people um, and it's a movement about trying to define a culture this is probably the first time in the history of the world where um, it has become possible to go ahead and change a worldwide culture. We're seeing this spread all over the place. Uh, everywhere on the planet has, has Occupy X, Occupy Y, and they're all unified by the fact that they're all in the same context. That is to say, they're all being uh, unfairly treated economically. And uh, it doesn't matter whether they prefer a specific religion or whether they have very specific very specific restrictions on their culture or what what sort of people they are all that matters is that they have the same basic moral response to this which is that's unfair and it sucks as long as they can agree on this they can build a new culture um, a new worldwide culture a significant portion of the population of the planet can eventually come together with this culture. Now, I'm not saying it'll stop war. I'm not saying that it's anything um, uh, as, as large as it sounds on paper here. But I am saying that it does create a new kind of, of culture where there will at least be a large minority who are agreeing on some very fundamental values regardless of their own uh, specific idiosyncrasies within their culture as to you know things like women's rights or, or health care all that stuff um, even if they can't agree on those matters they can still agree across boundaries across oceans that the world is not how it should be and that they can shake it up some and if they get along with someone they wouldn't normally get along with while they're doing that that's just fine so uh, what I guess I'm trying to say is this is a worldwide culture that's forming under our noses and it would be a shame to damage that by issuing specific demands in specific locations against specific people just not a great idea instead let's go ahead and keep developing in the way we are now and build ourselves a little worldwide culture.